Welcome to my fourth Macro Express Pro tutorial. In the last tutorial, I talked about several of the commands. And in this tutorial, I'm hoping to finish up with all the commands. So let's see if we can do it. In multimedia, we have some audio balance and volume controls here. So the ones that I find most useful are audio volume, mute, unmute, or mute toggle. You can also set bass and treble if you so desire. The one that I tend to use the most from here, though, is sound file. You can select a, an audio file and play as a preview here. And you can check this box to wait for the sound to finish before continuing the macro, or leave it unchecked and just continue while it plays. In the network section, I frequently use the network connect command. This allows you to connect a network drive with Macro Express, and I tend to do this when the computer starts. I find that easier than having to enter the password for any network drives that I've told to be permanent. Once again, if you're an advanced user and you know how to use the registry, this allows you to create, delete, and read and write keys from the registry. If you're not an advanced user, please don't use this. You'd very much screw up your computer. Repeat is extremely valuable. Anytime that you want to run some commands multiple times, and you don't want to actually put those commands in your macro multiple times, which is frequently the case, you can use repeat. You can use one of these repeat starting points, and you always have to have an end repeat. Let's look repeat, uh, repeat start. You can specify a number of times that you want to repeat. Well, maybe this is 100. And you can start with a counter point and then increment or decrement. You could, in fact, say this is also 100. And you could decrement and say this is negative 1. Now this counter will count down to 0. You can store that counter in a variable, and I almost always do. It makes it valuable for use later on. Now, if you don't know how many times you want to repeat, that's what repeat until is good for. You can specify a variable here, and then check to see if that variable equals does not equal less than greater than contains does not contain the value you specify here, whether this be text, a variable, or a combination of the two. Now, what you have to be careful with repeat until with is it's really easy to create an infinite loop. You could repeat from now until eternity if you don't ever meet this condition. So be careful of that. We can repeat with processes. This would go through every process on your computer and place that in a variable and allow you to repeat over those. We can repeat with windows. And you can specify all windows, visible windows, or just the hidden windows. And as it comes through your repeat, you can specify whether you want to sort by window order or alphabetical. And then, of course, it places those in a variable that you can use in your repeat section. And you can repeat over a folder. And what it will do is return all of the files and folders within that folder and place those in a variable for you to use. You can return the full file path and process subfolders if you so desire. Now, a couple other commands here is you can repeat exit if you decide at some point in your repeat that you just want to break out and quit the repeat. Or you can use continue if you want to skip this repeat increment and move on to the next one. In system we have a lot of commands that are Windows commands that you can do, change the default printer, run something from the control panel, empty the recycling bin, you know, hibernate, log off, reboot, shut down, change the wallpaper, change your screensaver settings. So there's a lot of useful commands here, and I'll leave you to explore those and decide if any of those are something you want to include in a macro. So timing. Timing has a lot of commands that help us wait for just the right time to continue our macro. One of the useful commands is delay. We have delay in seconds, milliseconds, and time delay in seconds and milliseconds. Well, what's the difference between delay in seconds and time delay in milliseconds? Delay in seconds has a very, very tight loop. 
and it constantly checks to see if it's time to stop or not. Well, that wreaks havoc on your CPU. It basically can bring your CPU to 100% while it waits. That's not very helpful. Time delay, on the other hand, tells Windows, hey, you know, wake me up when it's time for me to go again. And that's good, except your macro is now unresponsive until the time delay is complete. Typically, you can click on your macro, the little running man icon in your system tray, to kill the macro at any point. But during a time delay, you can't do this. So let's say that you have a 60 second delay you need to make before you want to continue your macro. Well, that could be sort of painful waiting 60 seconds before you could cancel that macro. So a workaround is to repeat 60 times with one of our repeat commands and do a time delay of one second in between each repeat. This allows you to cancel your macro within one second, but you still get your time delay without killing your CPU. So several of these other wait commands can be very useful, but the one that I find the most useful aside from delay is wait for window title. This allows us to specify a window title, such as this one, and wait for it to become the current window or the top window. Once that's happened, this allows your macro to continue. Now you can specify wait indefinitely, or wait at most a specified amount of time, defined by variables, or defined statically. Variables has a gold mine of commands that we can use. Some of the really useful ones are join string, where you can specify an array of values that you want to join together into a single string. You can specify a starting element, an ending element, and then something you want to go between each of the pieces in the array. And then a variable that you want to assign that ending string in. We also have split string, where we can take a string with something between it that we want to split on, and then we can put it in an array afterwards. So another command that's really useful is setString. And here we can set a specific value for a variable, and this can contain text and variable mixture. Or we can prompt for a value, or get it from the clipboard, or from a text file, or from the topmost program name or window name or current folder, I and I, prompt for file name, prompt for folder name. You get the idea. That one is very useful, as well as this one, set integer. Now, we can set an initial value, or prompt for one, or get the mouse x, y coordinates, or size of a file. This one has a lot of options. We can get positions of the window, or size of the window, dates, times. A lot of options here. So modify string is another really useful one. We have a lot of different commands that we can perform on a string. We can trim. We can strip the control line feed, which is a line break off the end of some data. Convert it to an integer, decimal, append text, a append to a string variable. We can copy part of it. We can delete part of it. Let me show you delete part of it. You can specify a starting point and how many characters you want to delete. In uppercase, lowercase, pad left, pad right, that's adding extra characters to the end or to the front. Replace string would be the same as delete, only you replace it with a string. Save to clipboard, save to a text file, append to text, save to INI, and save to an environment variable. So modify string allows us to do a lot of valuable things with a string as well. Now modify integer. We can add, subtract, multiply, divide, convert to a text string, decimal, copy a value increment, or decrement. So let's say that you had a number and you wanted to add to it in a, inside of a loop. Well, rather than say, here's my variable, here's the variable I'm getting it from, add one, you could simply say, increment, and specify your variable, and it will add one to it. Okay. Now, Windows controls, again, if you don't know what controls are or don't know how to use them, just don't worry about this section. If you do, here you go. And Windows and Programs. Now, Activate or Launch will activate a window title that you specify, or if it doesn't exist, 
then it will execute the program and this is your program path and any parameters that you want to pass to your program you can run it normal minimized or maximized or hidden now if you're doing activate run program you probably don't want to do hidden because you're trying to get the window now launch and activate this is if you know that the window isn't running you want to launch it and activate it you minimize window to a system tray you can just launch a program you can just activate a window um, you can terminate a process now this would be a windowless process that you could terminate and then if you want to move and resize a window at the same time rather than having to reposition and resize you can specify a window or use the current window and just give it coordinates and a width and height as to what you want to do with it. Well, that concludes the fourth tutorial and all of the commands. Look forward to giving you some sample macros here in a little bit. So look for those to come and I hope this has been helpful for you.